As owner of the Redwood Mine, I can promise you a new era of prosperity, a building boom that will put Redwood on the map, and all of you will share in the wealth of this great enterprise. Well, Stoner, it looks like you hit the jackpot at last. That contract with the National Steel will put you in the millionaire's class. We'll all benefit by it, Sam. I think we better take a ride out to the mine. I will have trouble with Steve Clayton. Why? Think he suspects anything? Well, I don't know, but don't worry. I got Garvey and his men on the watch. Right? Looks like he could use a little help. Well, what are we waiting for?
they got too good a start. That binds me up. We didn't even get close enough to see who they was. Let's get back and see how Steve is, all right? I tell you, we got to get a hold of the Clayton Ranch or we can't go on operating the mine. I realize that. But we ought to make him another offer for his property. It's no use. Clayton considers me his friend. And if anyone could get him to sell, I could, and he refuses to budge. But you're not getting anywhere by raiding his property and shooting up his men. Listen, Stoner, that's the only way to force him off his land. Yes, but look at my side of it. You discovered this ore deposit, and I advanced the money to develop it. But we didn't know then that this vein of ore runs through the Clayton property. Well, we've tunneled too far into his ranch to back out now. I don't intend to, but I don't want to lose my investment. Can't we make some kind of a deal with Clayton? We're not making deals with anybody, understand? Just caught Clayton sneaking off the mine property and we chased him up into Rock Canyon. I told you fellas not to let anyone near that property except the workmen. If Clayton gets wise... I don't think he will. Yeager shot him. Did he kill him? I don't know. Well, why didn't you find out? Jack Adams showed up. We had to get out of there before he recognized us. Are you fellas afraid of Adams' reputation as a gunfighter? Are you calling me yellow? Now, wait a minute, Garvey. Sam wasn't questioning your courage. But we've got to get hold of that property. And if Adams stands in the way, we'll have to get rid of him. And in the future, let no one near that property, understand? No one. I better take a run over and see what happened to Clayton. If he's still alive, well, we've got to find out how much he knows. since he was hit. Steve. Aunt Ruth, what's happening to my daddy? Now, don't you worry, honey. Everything is all right. No, it isn't. Twinkle, you have to add to your glass of water. Ruth. Garvey's men, they... Steve. Why, what happened to Steve? He was murdered. Murdered? Who did it? I don't know. Didn't he say who? He died before he could tell us. He was a fine man, and he'll be a great loss to the community. Please tell Ruth how sorry I am. Yes, I will. Yes, it is a great loss to the community, but a greater loss to me. He was my friend, and I'm going to find out who killed him. I know just how you feel, Jack. Yes, Mr. Adams, go right in. Mr. Ballard? How are you? Mr. Stoner? Hello, Adams. What's on your mind? Steve Clayton. You see, on the day he was shot, he told me he was going out to mosey around the mine. What for? Well, I figure he was on the trail of the gang that's been raiding our ranch. I feel sure Clayton was murdered because of something he knew. And whatever that something was had some connection with the mine. <laughs> Nonsense. They're just a bunch of hard-working miners out there. Well, just the same, I'd like to get permission to look the mine over. 
I might uncover a clue that would lead me to Steve's killer. Look here, Adams. Are you hinting that one of my workmen killed your boss? You're jumping to conclusions, aren't you, Mr. Stoner? Perhaps I am, but I have the right to protect my workmen. I'm not going to let you go out there and play detective. But the first thing I know, there'll be fights and arguments. All I want to do is make a quiet investigation. What's wrong with that? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I have no objection to you looking over the mine. Have you, Stoney? Well, I, I guess not. If he doesn't create a disturbance. Well, I think we can depend upon Adams. Thank you, Mr. Ballard. You're welcome. That's asking you for trouble, Sam. Use your head. I am using my head. If we let Adams into that mine, he's going to know that we're taking ore off the Clayton property. He won't get that far. You tell Garvey to have the boys out to Eagle Rock at 2.30. I want them to meet Adams. Do you hear now? Here they come. Wildcat. Don't mind me, I'm all right. Let's get out of here before he recognizes us. Now, Ruth, don't you worry about a thing. I'll file your brother's will today. Oh, by the way, are there any obligations against the ranch? Yes, the bank holds a mortgage. Well, that, of course, you'll have to take up with Mr. Stoner. Yes, I know. And I don't know where the money's coming from since we've been unable to ship our cattle. Miss Clayton, I want to tell you how sorry I am to hear about your brother. You're sorry. You're the last man in the world to be sorry. Why, I... I don't understand. I'm quite sure that you know something about the murder of my brother. Oh, Ruth, dear, you don't realize what you're saying. Of course she doesn't. Why, this is the most preposterous thing I've ever heard. Oh, no, it isn't. Jack told me that Steve was out on your mine property just before he was killed. And your men must have killed him. You'd better be prepared to back up that statement, young lady. I will, just as soon as I get the proof. Then suppose you wait until you do before you start accusing people. Ruth, you act too hastily. I know you're grief stricken. So but... why shouldn't I be? I've lost the only person in the world who really meant anything to me. Poor girl's upset. She's so grief stricken. If you think I'm going to take this, you're crazy. I could tell by the look on some of the faces in that crowd that they believed what she said. I. I've been listening to you too long, Ballard. And you're gonna keep on listening. Oh, you're sure of that, are you? Well, you get this. I'm not going to be publicly branded for a crime committed by your men. My men? Ruth Clayton said they were your men. Don't you realize that sooner or later somebody's gonna find out? Clayton did, didn't he? Yes, and where did it get him? 
And do you realize there's only one person standing between us and the possession of the Clayton Ranch? You mean Ruth Clayton? That's right. Now, I can dispose of her without throwing any suspicion on either one of us. And then we can proceed along legal lines to take over the property. I don't want any part of it. Stoner, you've made a lot of mistakes in your life. You better let me run this or we'll have to end up in the penitentiary. Or worse. All right, Ballard. I, I guess you win. Well, now, that's more like it. You meet me here tonight at 7.45, and I'll tell you my plans. The boys get Adams. Garvey missed, and Adam got away. What's the matter with Garvey? I told him to get Adams. Here. Take this note out to Ruth Clayton at the ranch and get an answer. And tell her it's from Stoner. It's getting awfully late. I wonder what's keeping Jack and Wildcat. Note from Mr. Stoner. Thank you. Tell him I'll be there. That's strange. It must be important. Do you think you ought to ride into town alone? Oh, I'll be all right, Tom. You watch out for Twinkle, and the boys ought to be back soon. I pay for it. I found that rowl up on Eagle Rock, which sort of proves that you were there the afternoon Wildcat and I were shot at.
like everything is well in hand. Or I should have said underfoot. Hey, Coily, give us a double buttermilk. Hey, break it up. What's going on here? What's the idea of starting a brawl in here? Why don't you ask Jaeger? Sheriff, better knock the three of them up till they cool off. Well, whatever you say, Mr. Ballard. Come on, you drizzle puss. Wait a minute, you can't lock me up. I'm allergic to jails. I'm infected with closet phobia. You get what? Tell him what I get, Jack. He suffers from claustrophobia. He can't stand too many walls around him. Oh, come on. Wait a minute, buddy. I'll go when I'm ready. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready. I want to have a talk with Mr. Ballard later. Come on, boys. The drinks are on me. You know, I don't like the idea of Yeager being lumped up with Adams. Yeager's liable to run off at the mouth. Yeah, that's right. Maybe we better do something about that. Don't you understand, Jaeger? An accessory to murder hangs with a murderer. For the last time, who killed Steve Clayton? Better come clean, Jaeger, if you want to save your own neck. on it. But Ballard, this is robbery. I financed the Redwood Mine, and now you're asking me to sign over my share. That's right. I'm not splitting the profits with anybody. You're a dirty thief. Hold it. Now sign it. Did you fire that shot? No, no, I didn't. What's happened to Stoner? Uh, he's been shot. My Ruth, what's happened? Oh, it's Mr. Stoner. He's dead. What do you know about this, Ruth? Why, why nothing. Well, uh, what are you doing here? Well, Mr. Stoner sent for me. Here's the note he sent me. Why, this isn't Stoner's handwriting. Ruth, you didn't write this note in order to have an alibi in case someone caught you here, did you? How can you say that? Well, you practically accused Stoner of being implicated in the death of your brother Steve. It wasn't revenge that drove you to kill him, was it? Stop questioning me like that. You know I didn't kill him. Well, that's rather hard to believe. And where did you get that gun? She was carrying it when we rushed in. Oh, you can't frame me for this. 
stand where you are. And if you try to stop me, I will shoot someone. Somebody get something and break this down. Jaeger's murder ought to convince you he was one of the gang that killed Steve Clayton. Well, I guess you're right, Adams, but what can I do about it? Let us out of this cheese box and I'll do something about it. How are you going to do it? Well, first, give me one of your deputy badges. I want for me, too. All right, Adams. You're so anxious to uphold the law. I'll give you a shot at it. your right hand. Not you. What's going on here? Why aren't these men locked up? Somebody killed Jaeger, and I deputized Adams to bring him in. Well, when'd that happen? Well, about a half hour ago. Well, at the same time, start looking for Ruth Clayton. I want a warrant for her arrest. Ruth Clayton? What's the charge? Murder of William Stoner. Murder? That's right. She just shot and killed Stoner. Where is she? I don't know. She got away. All right, Deputy Adams. Arrest Ruth Clayton. As acting judge, will you release her on bail if I bring her in? Of course, naturally. That's fair enough. Come on, Wildcat. That's rather foolish, Sheriff, sending Adams after his own boss. You don't have to worry about Adams. He's a smart young fella. And he's got sense enough to know that he's got to bring her in if he wants to prove her innocence. Where have you fellas been? In jail. I never saw such a blue law town in all my days. Do you mind? Not now, Wildcat. Has Ruth been here? Yes, but she only stopped long enough to get some food and left again. Have you any idea where she went? Well, no, I haven't, but... She left this for you. Jack, find me at the cabin in Oak Canyon. Please come at once, Ruth. You stay here with Tom. Where are you going? Well, if that don't take a rag off the bush, just when he needs a good two gunman in front of him, he rides off and leaves me behind him. I might as well just hang my horse up in a barn. Come on, Junior. Not so good. I'll hit it this time. Watch me. Junior. Sure. But if you want to see some snappy shooting, get a peek at this. What are you going to do, shoot the pumpkin in two? No, I'm going to shoot the arrow in three. You know, I spent a couple of weeks with the Hopatuti Indians one time. They liked me so well, they made me a chief. Is that so? It ain't stitched. Yes, sir, I used to go hunting wildcats with a bow and arrow. That's why they call me wildcat. Break that window. Well, I... Remember George Washington? I know George Washington. He crossed to Delaware. Yeah? Well, you better get George to help you put in a new pane of glass. I've got some in the tool shed. That's what you get from Boston. I'll get him with you. Come on. what happened? Yes. I suppose you're wondering why I ran away, but I just couldn't help it. I can understand that. 
Jack. I had the most horrible sort of trapped feeling when they accused me of murder. Well, it looks to me like a deliberate attempt to get you out of the way. But why? That's just what I'm going to find out. Ruth, there's only one thing for you to do. Go back and face the charge. Oh, I can't give myself up. I've got to find some way to prove my innocence. Well, you'll never do it hiding out. Jack, what can I do? I've got to take you in. What are you doing with this? I've been deputized, and this is my first job. So this is your idea of loyalty. But Ruth, let me explain. You don't need to. I can see now that you're nothing but a contemptible sneak. You think you're going to drag me into jail? You're wrong. But you won't be locked up. I made Ballard promise to release you on bail. I'm sorry, Jack. That's better. Come on. your prisoner, Sheriff. But, Jack, you said Now, don't worry, Ruth. I'll see acting Judge Ballard and arrange bail. Well, meanwhile, I'll have to lock her up. But I'll bring over the release order for Ballard's signature. Right. Well, did you find it? Just turned her over to the sheriff. Splendid. Good work, young man. Now, if you'll just arrange bail. Well, I'm sorry. New evidence has come up, and I can't grant bail. But you told me if I brought... I don't care what I told you. I said no bail. She'll have to stand trial for murder. Why, you dirty double-crossing rat. Take it easy. All right, outside. <laughs> and wreck it like this? Well, Ballard promised to release Ruth on bail, and now he refuses. Here, take your phony badge. I'll find out who killed Steve Clayton without the help of the law. Well, you think you're tough? Tough? I'm so tough, they used to call me the Lightning Terrier. You mean terror, don't you? No, I mean Terry. Everybody used to want to muzzle me. Remember George Washington? I remember George Washington. In fact, I had a brother called George Washington Higgins one time. Was he the George Washington that cut down the cherry tree? Now, my brother, he ain't done a type of work in nine years. Say, by the way, Tom, did I ever tell you about the time a ventilated one-eyed Mike? Another one of his stories, Twinkle. Well, I'll show you how it happened now. Just let me have a little roll. Now, say, uh, let's see. Yes, it is. I remember it. Now, there, uh, that's the one I had mine. And, uh, this is me. I said to him, one eye, you have a double dyed coyote. And he said, now, wait a minute, Wild Cat. There's no sense of us getting excited here. And I said, that's just what I figured, one eye. Kind of yellow, I reckon. Well, take that. And 
that. How was I? You were giving one eye the worst of it. Yeah, that's that's right. So. So then I said to him, I said, I reckon you better draw, you lop-eyed critter. <laughs> And he said, don't shoot me, Wildcat. Let's straighten these things out. But you see, Tom, out of the corner of my eye, I caught him. I saw him picking up his gun. I reckon he was aiming to shoot me in the back. Quick as a flash, I picked my own up, and I said, he had his gun up. He let one go at me. Then what happened? Oh, nothing. They buried the two of us the next day. <laughs> going on here? We're taking over. You've got 24 hours to get off of this property. Hey, just a minute, bud. You can't do that to us. Oh, we can't, huh? Maybe they can, eh, Tom? Garvey doing here? I never saw such skullduggery. He gave us 24 hours to get off this property just because the Redwood Mine was taking it over. He did, did he? He certainly did. It looks like some of Ballard's dirty work. Tom, you better hitch up the rig and take Twinkle to town where she'll be safe. All right, Jack. Come on, Wildcat. We got work to do. That. This is just what I've been looking for. It's just like another map to me. Yeah? Here, take this compass. We're gonna look this shaft over. Okay, that does it. That's enough.
tunnel runs due east. Well, what do you think it leads to? Right under the Clayton Ranch. No wonder Steve was killed. He found out they were tunneling under his property. You mean they, they were stealing his malevolent... They were taking his all out? That's right. And Stoner must have found out, too. But Stoner's dead. There's only one answer. And that is? Sam Ballard. He killed the banker and blamed it on to Ruth so he could take over her ranch. Well, gee willikers. Come on, we gotta get to town. Hmm. Jack Adams at the mine. Why didn't you drill him? He had the drop on me and I tried to... Never mind to... that. Adams is liable to show up here any minute trying to get Ruth Clayton out of jail. Well, the sheriff release her. Well, he's liable to after he hears Adams' story. So, Garvey, you take your boys and go out to the Clayton Ranch and wait there for me. Sheriff? I want you to release Ruth Clayton into my custody. Why? What's going on here? I'm going to take her out to the ranch. Keep her safe from violence. What violence? Well, there's uh, rumors of an attempted jailbreak. Now, the townspeople believe you guilty, and they're liable to take the law in their own hands. Oh, no. No, they wouldn't do that. Well, I won't give them the chance. All right, Sheriff, open it up. I will, Sheriff. If Adam shows up in town, why, well, tell him we went out to Clayton Ranch. All right. Sheriff, I've got to have a talk with Ruth Clayton. She isn't here. You mean she's been released? Well, not exactly. You see, Ballard got a little worried about her, and I let him take her out to the ranch. And you played right into his hands. Of all the dumb things... What do you mean? Well, you just turned Ruth over to the man who's behind all the crooked work around this town. Sam Ballard? Yes, Sam Ballard. I'll be a horn toad. Yeah, you ought to be. Don't seem to be anybody around. Well, my guess is there's plenty of people in there. Well, go in easy. Here they come. Step out and call Adams in, and don't step too far. Jack! Oh, Jack! Jack, look out! It's to me. Are you all right, Ruth? 
Rose? I'm all right. Good. Who's in there? Ballot and Garvey and some of their men. That's just what I wanted. Hold this. Never touch me. Jack, do you think it'll work? It better. if you ask me. Well, you must be tired. Lay down a little bit, shorty. Guys shoot straighter than I do. I won't get light. principal owner of the new mining company, you'll be glad to know that our expert's on his way out from the east. Well, that means we can start full-scale operations soon. Within a week or two, I'd say. We have our own mining expert here. Is that so? Yes, come along. I'd like to have you meet him. It's in my blood, you know, like, uh, we'll say sort of a family tradition. 
My grandfather discovered the Comstock Globe. He made over $30 billion for it. Then I had an uncle one. Winchell, how many times did I tell you you should never walk under a ladder? It's the worst thing you can do. But I'm not superstitious. It doesn't make it. Oh, look, I dropped my hammer. It doesn't make any difference. Anytime anybody walks under a ladder, it's bad luck. Yes, you see what you... This is our expert, Mr. Higgins. <laughs> I want to tell you one thing, and that ain't three. This may not be that uh, millennium, uh, whatever you call it, but it's one of the finest alley apples I ever had in my hand, and I'm going to bounce it right off that twinkle's head. I'll put them in the bottom drawer if it's the last thing I do. Twinkle! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>